Hello everybody and welcome to Wednesday's reading session. Um, you hopefully remember on Monday we started the text George's Marvellous Medicine by Roald Dahl. And um, today we're going to read another part of that text, a different extract. And we're going to skip further ahead into the text today. OK, we're going to go a bit further ahead. All right. So before we go in and read today's extract, let's just recap for a moment what's happened so far. We met really two main characters of this story. We met George and his grandma. OK, now, can you remember what was George's grandma like? Was she a nice, kind, sweet old lady? No, she wasn't. OK, she wasn't very nice to George. George didn't like her very much. She was pretty horrible to him. OK, now we're skipping further ahead. And in the story, George has decided to make his own horrible, disgusting medicine for his grandma. OK. Now, before we go and read that, I should say, don't try this at home, OK? You shouldn't make horrible potions and feed them to people. That's not a good thing to do, and it could be quite dangerous. So, obviously, don't try this at home. Um, this is just a story. So, nothing really bad happens in the story, OK? But just bear in mind, this isn't something you should do in real life, OK? So, where we're up to in the story, then, George is kind of wandering around his house, and he's finding all sorts of ingredients to put into his potion which he's going to give to his grandma and it's all pretty disgusting okay so just a couple of little reminders because this is a reading fluency lesson so first of all don't rush okay try not to read too fast so fast that it doesn't make any sense but also try not to sound everything out because then it will take you ages and ages so where possible if you know the word, just say the word on site. Avoid sounding it out. OK, so once again, we're going to do Mario and Luigi reading. So when you see the Mario logo, that means it's my turn to read. And when you see the Luigi logo, it's your turn to read. And what we'll do, we'll build it up gradually, sort of one paragraph at a time, like we did before. OK, so. Let's begin then. So, as I said, George is wandering around his house, finding things to put into his potion. He's making this medicine. So I will begin from, let me get my pen. Let's have blue. So I'm going to go from this paragraph here, OK, there, up until there. OK. He found a couple of lipsticks. He pulled the greasy red things out of their little cases and added them to the mixture. The bedroom had nothing more to offer, so George carried the enormous saucepan downstairs again and trotted into the laundry room, where the shelves were full of all kinds of household items. OK, so a bit more context again. The enormous saucepan is what he's using. So I'll just highlight that there. The enormous saucepan is what he's using to make his medicine in. OK, so he's getting these ingredients and putting them into the saucepan. And in this paragraph, he's added some lipstick. OK, right. So in a moment, it'll be your turn to read that first paragraph. Here we go. So remember this paragraph here. Oh, it's come out really big. So that paragraph there. Um, hit pause now and have a go at reading that, please. OK, hopefully you've done that. So I'm now going to add to it. All right. And I'm going to read this paragraph, but I'm also going to do this second paragraph, the second block of text here. OK. So. He found a couple of lipsticks. He pulled the greasy red things out of their little cases and added them to the mixture. The bedroom had nothing more to offer. So George carried the enormous saucepan downstairs again and trotted into the laundry room, where the shelves were full of all kinds of household items. The first one he took down was a large box of super white for automatic washing machines. Dirt, it said, will disappear like magic. George didn't know whether Grandma was auto automatic or not, but she was certainly dirty. So she better have it all, he said, tipping in the whole box full. OK, so your turn again. You've got section one, paragraph one there and you're adding paragraph two now as well. OK, so hit pause now, please, and have a go at reading those first two paragraphs. OK, hopefully you've done that. So let's add a little bit more. So 
that you guessed it, we've done two. We're now going to go on to the third paragraph as well. OK, so right down until the word dogs there. He found a couple of lipsticks. He pulled the greasy red things out of their little cases and added them to the mixture. The bedroom had nothing more to offer, so George carried the enormous saucepan downstairs again and trotted into the laundry room, where the shelves were full of all kinds of household items. The first one he took down was a large box of super white for automatic washing machines. Dirt, it said, will disappear like magic. George didn't know whether Grandma was automatic or not, but she was certainly dirty. So she'd better have it all, he said, tipping in the whole box full. Then there was a big tin of Waxwell floor polish. It removes filth and foul messes from your floor and leaves everything shiny bright, it said. George scooped the orange coloured waxy stuff out of the tin and plonked it into the pan. There was a round cardboard carton labelled flea powder for dogs. I think I know where that's going. Right. So your turn again. This time we're adding the third paragraph. All right. But as ever, keep practising the other ones as well. So you're building up that fluency. Hit pause now, please, and have a go at reading that. OK, so hopefully you've done that now. I'm now going to do essentially the entire page. OK, so the whole page. He found a couple of lipsticks. He pulled the greasy red things out of their little cases and added them to the mixture. The bedroom had nothing more to offer, so George carried the enormous saucepan downstairs again and trotted into the laundry room, where the shelves were full of all kinds of household items. The first one he took down was a large box of super white for automatic washing machines. Dirt, it said, will disappear like magic. George didn't know whether Grandma was automatic or not, but she was certainly dirty. So she'd better have it all, he said, tipping in the whole box full. Then there was a big tin of Waxwell floor polish. It removes filth and foul messes from your floor and leaves everything shiny bright, it said. George scooped the orange coloured waxy stuff out of the tin and plonked it into the pan. There was a round cardboard carton labelled flea powder for dogs. Keep well away from dog's food, it said, because this powder, if eaten, will make your dog explode. Good, said George, pouring it all into the saucepan. OK, now it's your turn as well. So those four paragraphs, that whole page. Have a go at reading that now. Hit pause, please. OK, we're now on to the second page then. So I'm going to read this bit first and then it will be your turn. So right up until here and it will be your turn to read that section as well. Back in the kitchen, George put the huge saucepan on the table and went over to the cupboard that served as a larder. The shelves were bulging with bottles and jars of every sort. He chose the following and emptied them one by one into the saucepan. OK, so your turn to read that first paragraph there. OK, hit pause now, please, and have a go at reading that. OK, so now let's add to that. We're going to read this and then we're going to list. We're going to read the list, sorry of jars and bottles that George is having a look at. So we're going to read these two sections here. Back in the kitchen, George put the huge saucepan on the table and went over to the cupboard that served as a larder. The shelves were bulging with bottles and jars of every sort. He chose the following and emptied them one by one into the saucepan. A tin of curry powder, a tin of mustard power, a bottle of extra hot chilli sauce, a tin of black peppercorns, a bottle of horseradish sauce. OK, that's a kind of spicy sauce. Right. So your turn now to read those two paragraphs. OK, so off you go. OK, hopefully you've done that. I'm now going to do the rest again. It looks bigger than it is, but it's a lot of dialogue here. And then you've got the picture taking up space as well. So section three. OK, I'm just going to read the whole page. OK. 
Back in the kitchen, George put the huge saucepan on the table and went over to the cupboard that served as a larder. The shelves were bulging with bottles and jars of every sort. He chose the following and emptied them one by one into the saucepan. A tin of curry powder, a tin of mustard powder, powder, a bottle of extra hot chilli sauce, a tin of pe black peppercorns, a bottle of horseradish sauce. There, he said aloud, that should do it. George, came the screechy voice from the next room. Who are you talking to in there? What are you up to? Nothing, Grandma, absolutely nothing, he called back. Is it time for my medicine yet? No, Grandma, not for about half an hour. Well, you just see you don't forget it. I won't, Grandma, George answered. I promise I won't. <clears throat> OK, so your turn now to read that whole page, OK, all of page two. So hit pause now and have a go at doing that, please. OK, hopefully you've done that now. So last bit, as ever, I'm going to read through the whole thing and then it'll be your turn to have a go at reading the whole thing as well. OK, so here we go. He found a couple of lipsticks. He pulled the greasy red things out of their little cases and added them to the mixture. The bedroom had nothing more to offer. So George carried the enormous saucepan downstairs again and trotted into the laundry room where the shelves were full of all kinds of household items. The first one he took down was a large box of super white for automatic washing machines. Dirt, it said, will disappear like magic. George didn't know whether Grandma was automatic or not, but she was certainly dirty. So she'd better have it all, he said, tipping in the whole box full. Then there was a big tin of Waxwell floor polish. It removes filth and foul messes from your floor and leaves everything shiny bright, it said. George scooped the orange coloured waxy stuff out of the tin and plonked it into the pan. There was a round cardboard carton labelled flea powder for dogs. Keep well away from the dog's food, it said, because this powder, if eaten, will make the dog explode. Good, said George, pouring it all into the saucepan. Back in the kitchen, George put the huge saucepan on the table and went over to the cupboard that served as a larder. The shelves were bulging with bottles and jars of every sort. He chose the following and emptied them one by one into the saucepan. A tin of curry powder, a tin of mustard powder, a bottle of extra hot chilli sauce, a tin of black peppercorns, a bottle of horseradish sauce. There, he said aloud, that should do it. George, came the screechy voice from the next room. Who are you talking to in there? What are you up to? Nothing, Grandma, absolutely nothing, he called back. Is it time for my medicine yet? No, Grandma, not for about half an hour. Well, just you see you don't forget it. I won't, Grandma, George answered. I promise I won't. And there we go. That's the whole text. So your turn now to read through it. You might want to read through it two or three times to get really fluent. Um, but thank you very much for watching and have fun reading today's extract of George's Marvellous Medicine.